Hey, what's going on everybody? Justin here and in this video we're going to be continuing on with my sort of best of the first half of 2020 books and I'm going over different genres and subgenres uh, and different types of books and my, you know, obviously just my favorites of 2020 so far in the first half or so of the year. And with this video we're going to be doing my favorite, my top three Warhammer books that I've read, um, like I said, in the first half of 2020. Uh, I don't think any of these were actually published in 2020, but I think two of them were 2019. So, I mean, still fairly pretty, uh, pretty. I'm trying to catch up in sort of the 40k universe now. Uh, all last year, all I read was like Horus Heresy stuff. And then this year, I've been doing Horus Heresy stuff and 40k. So, I got a pretty good mix uh, kind of going on with that. And for the first one, I'm going to do an honorable mention is actually Fulgrim. I don't know why I didn't have the book out, but anyways, Fulgrim here by Graham McNeil, uh, Visions of Treachery. I think I read this one like two months ago. Um, I, I will say, I'll give it the honorable mention. A lot of people um, really rate this one very highly, um, and some, for some people it's even like kind of their favorite out of uh, out of the Horace Heresy books. And I can understand why, uh, I just, I don't click very well with the Emperor's Children, and with Fulgrim in particular, he's like, like pretty much like anti-me because he's so kind of... Even before his, like, descent into chaos, he's so, like, vainglorious and stuff. Uh, it's just, like, not how I, like, think and stuff. Uh, but I will say, like, kind of the descent into madness that Fulgrim uh, kind of goes through, like, his whole entire story arc over the course of the book is pretty good. It's, it's very well written. I can see why, uh, obviously, this is, like, a, you know, just kind of a, a big hit in the uh, Warhammer Horse Heresy community. All right, so now let's get into my uh, top three favorite uh, Warhammer books that I read in 2020 so far. First up, we're going to go with uh, Corvus Corax, uh, Lord of Shadows, and I think this is by Guy Haley. I'll put the book right there. And this is part of the uh, Primarch series in the Horus Heresy, uh, where there's going to be one for each uh, Primarch, and they're all short novels. And a lot of them kind of deal with a little bit of background sketches or... Um, Kind of flashbacks from the Primarchs like upbringing on the respective planets. It's a little disappointed in uh, that this book I uh, didn't deal with much of Korax's sort of upbringing um, and insurgency on the uh, planet Deliverance as opposed to like some of the other ones I've read such as uh, Angron's um, on New Syria and Conrad Kerr's on Nostromo. Uh, there's kind of a lot of like kind of flashbacks and stuff that you learn more about uh, the Primarchs that way. Uh, however, without um, a lot of flashbacks, uh, the instead of the flashback story arc, it's actually um, kind of like a, another counterinsurgency of former pupils of uh, Korax. It's kind of like kind of the the like kind of the subplot that's kind of going on in the background the entire time. So it is definitely uh, pretty interesting. Uh, the Nineteenth Legion, the Raven Guard, are brought into uh, I can't remember what the Moon System is called, but uh, they're brought into um, a sector where the Astromil Tower is having a hard time. Um, kind of forcing compliance um, after this system sort of kind of uh, rebelled against the Imperium of Mankind. And you have a lot of kind of going on in the background where Korax has plans and stuff. And even though he's definitely one of the more respectable Primarchs in the sense of, you know, he's not like super mean and like super arrogant, I guess, to everyone else haughty, I guess. Uh, but in this one, you definitely see that even though he's like, like I said, one of the good Primarchs. Um, it definitely comes across as he's sort of headstrong and stuff um, when he gets too focused on his whole shtick is basically justice um, and basically bringing about justice like no matter what the cost. And that kind of gets in the way of, you know, kind of like a excuse me, successful. I guess it's still a successful campaign, obviously, but uh, I guess you just have to read it to understand. Like, like I said, that sort of his mindset gets a little bit in the way and he kind of overruns. The opinions of others just because you know he's you know, the primarch and he's in charge uh, and once he kind of gets that one focus it kind of he kind of gets tunnel vision and that actually you know uh, brings on the downfall of some others however some of the stuff they're facing against is uh pretty crazy i, do, I don't want to get into too many details and ruin uh, this short but it's not a short story i guess short novel i guess i should say uh but yeah, the Raven Guard definitely have a tough time with it. Um, I mean, got a lot of action kind of going on, but you also have a lot of insurgency kind of subplots um, as well, and that kind of makes things interesting. So there is Corvus Corex in the Primark series. Next up, we have Honorbound, a Severina Rain novel by Rachel Harrison. I was really looking forward to this one. 
uh, because it's written by a female author and features obviously a female protagonist. And that's something a little bit different from the Black Library and the uh, uh, all the Warhammer stuff that I've read before. But I'm really glad I did because this novel actually turned out to be uh, really, really cool. I'm kind of, I really enjoy kind of that, the Commissar stick. Uh, there's several different series uh, dealing with uh, Commissars. There's uh, Abram Gaunt, from uh, Guns Ghost. I've read two of those books. Those were my first 40k books and I really enjoyed them. Uh, obviously there's also Caiaphas Kane. I haven't read any of those. So I was like, I saw Severin Rain. I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna pick this one up. And anyways, uh, with this novel, we're dealing with the, uh, obviously Severin Rain is a commissar and attached to the Ontario Rifles and the Ontario Rifles are um, a force in the Bale Stars Crusade. Now, the Bale Stars Crusade is a crusade uh, that's been going against like these Psyker uh, Xenos, uh, which have like, uh, if you don't know this, uh, Psykers, it's kind of like telekinetic, uh, telepathic sort of abilities and whatnot. Uh, however, there's a lot of corruption and deception and stuff kind of going on with both sides, and that's sort of why the crusade is like slugging down and uh, just kind of stalling out and nothing's really um, getting accomplished. So Severing Rain has to watch out for enemies on both sides, both enemies and, you know, uh, you know theoretically her allies and whatnot. Uh, just because, like I said, the corruption <laughs> definitely runs deep as she finds out early on. So yeah, it's kind of a cool, like, kind of subplot. Um, there are obviously still a lot of, like, battles and uh, whatnot. The Ontario Rifles are pretty cool. At first, I wasn't sure, like, you know, what is going on there. It kind of looks like a hell gas from that like video game series or whatever uh but those are like the shock troopers uh, from the ontario rifles and they're pretty cool uh they deal a lot with a sort of stealth stuff as well not just like heavy blasting and what have you but anyways like i said she's got to watch out for both you know her own forces and the enemy forces uh, and some of the technology that the enemy is trying to like utilize and stuff is some pretty crazy chaos fate stuff which i'm just gonna <laughs> leave it at that um, but yeah, so like I said, there's almost like two things going on the entire book, which is really cool. Uh, some of these subplots with some of the, uh, side characters, I think were a little over, overdone. Uh, like, for example, one of them does have like a heavy drug addiction and stuff. And I think that one was played out maybe a tiny, a tad too much. Uh, but overall the book was still really cool. And the characters all, or a majority of the main characters all get like a pretty good, like flushed out, uh, saying so. That's why I enjoyed Honor Bound by Rachel Harrison. All right, and then lastly, probably my favorite Warhammer book so far, 2020, was Graham McNeil's A Thousand Sons, and the subtitle is All is Dust, and this follows uh, Magnus's, uh, the Magnus the Red's Primarch, uh, the Primarch of the Thousand Sons Legion, uh, in sort of their beginning of their descent uh, towards the uh, uh, traitorous forces of uh, Horus Lupercal. And what I, I, I partly really enjoy this book, because Magnus is probably my favorite traitor Primarch. I mean, while he's not a traitor Primarch uh, in this book, you can definitely see kind of, you know, his whole, like, reasoning behind why he would actually end up uh, joining a horse, even though at first he's uh, pretty set against him. Uh, if you recall, if you've read some of the earlier books, I can't remember if it's the second book, he actually tries to warn Horus about not, you know, falling, and tempting, or falling to the temptations of, of uh, chaos and everything. Uh, but... Yeah, like one of the scene, one of the major scenes of this book is the Council of Nikea, which is kind of like a parallel to, the, you know, the Council of Nikea that happened in like the 300s under the Emperor Constantine. And during this council, uh, the Emperor of Mankind rules essentially that uh, uh, psychers should not be used in the legions and by the Imperium of Man, excuse me, the Imperium of Man. And Magnus, and there's very, there's only like two other primarchs that uh, utilize psychers, uh, but Magnus by far and away um has like you know whole like cores or whatever of his uh lead of his legion like kind of dedicated to like the psychic arts and whatever and obviously he himself is like a master psyker uh probably only uh subpar to the emperor and like malkador uh, themselves so anyways once you know that light <laughs> that uh, uh edict is thrown down it's kind of like really awkward for the thousand sons and magnus himself and when Magnus tries to warn them for mankind by using these abilities, um, and gets really punished for it uh, by uh, kind of like their rival legion, the Space Wolves, uh, is kind of set against them. It just leads to a lot of bad blood kind of all over the place, just thrown around. Obviously, his home city, uh, or the home, his home world of Prospero, is put under siege and everything. So, 
like I said, you can easily see why Magnus was trying to, like, you know, he might have used bad, quote, quote, or excuse me, quote, unquote, bad methods, but he really was trying to, like, you know, help the Emperor of Mankind and, like, his fellow uh, legions and stuff uh, to prevent, you know, the entire Horus heresy from happen happening, and he still gets punished for it. So it's pretty easy, like I said, it's pretty easy to see why he would be jaded from all that and kind of just turn away. Uh, what I, go, I like about Magnus and the Thousand Sons, it's all about, like, the pursuit of knowledge and the, like, the, just, like, the thirst for wisdom and stuff. Uh, pretty much at, no matter what the cost, no, like, no matter where the knowledge comes from, they, they still want to just, like, like, try to do what they can to, like, understand it and utilize it in the best way possible. So I think that's partly why I kind of, like, I don't know, like, just, like, enjoy the uh, Thousand Sons Legion. Uh, but like I said, this is probably... Up there, probably my second, my, either tied for first or my second favorite Horace Heresy book that I've read so far, about the dozen or so that I've read. So there you have it. Those are my three uh, favorite Horace Heresy and Warhammer books that I've read so far in 2020. Uh, let me know if you read Warhammer books and if you do what your favorite uh, Warhammer book uh, has been in the last year or two. I'm always looking for good recommendations. Uh, like, So I might plan reading out, like I said, starting out with a few more. A new series especially since i'm kind of getting into the more of the 40 uh, some of the 40k stuff anyways uh now but i hope you all enjoyed the video i'll leave some links to some of my other uh warhammer videos if you're here for just like the warhammer stuff i'll leave like a playlist or something up there for you uh you to watch that so thank you all if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like comment subscribe all that good stuff plus check out the instagram and twitter and etsy all the plugs, essentially, but uh, no matter what you're reading, whether you're reading Warhammer or something else, always remember, read victoriously.